What it do, homies? It's your boy Dave, and I'm back today. We back here with some more pentatonics. This time we're checking out Where Are You Christmas? Let's go ahead and shut up and turn it up. I'm ready for the wall of sound. <laughs> You know, okay, so obviously we have a lot of high range singers here, right? Between Mitch, Kirsten, and Scott, any one of them can kind of come in here and start singing, you know, uh, the tune because we've all heard this song many times. But honestly, to tell you the truth, and this is just bare truth, guys, I think that the first time that I heard this song, and, and, and it's funny, but I think the first time that I heard this song was on uh the Grinch the one with Jim Carrey the live action one I think that was the first time I heard it and at that point I thought it was an original to that movie because I had never heard it before and I was like wow this is a really good song come to find out it's probably actually a traditional song so the only time I've heard this is when there's like a high-pitched person singing this I don't even know what the original one sounds like so I came into this knowing that Kirsten or Mitch or Scott was going to come in here and start taking it now um aside from all that I'm always impressed whenever I'm hearing acapella groups hit those 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 quarter notes or not quarter notes, uh, eighth notes. Uh, doo, 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 doo. I'm always impressed because it's it's not that they have to be in tune or they have to be you know not pitchy, but they also have to be in sync as far as like the rhythm, right? Doo, doo, doo. You can't be too short. It can't be too too um too fast. It's, it requires an immense amount of practice and some of the things, especially when it comes to the pentatonics group, things, some things, some of these might become natural only because of how long that they've been singing with each other. But I love that type of stuff and the harmonies that's going on in the background. It's another thing with pentatonics. Everything has attention to it. Even if it's background vocals, you best believe the harmonies are going to go crazy. Let's keep, let's continue. doing the doo-doo-doos i'm sitting here looking to see if it was scott or who was singing it it looked like it might have been a combination of maybe mitch because i think scott is also you know combining with matt was singing some of that bass and that's another thing that's really cool whenever we're focused on kind of like the higher upper singers like mitch or kirsten that means scott can take a step back and give us some really interesting bass lines right along with matt or kind of help feel that midsection a little bit more and of course we all know that kevin can you know he can sing as well right he does he's, he's primary to beatbox but with a song like this especially during the beginning where there's not much percussion going on until what we're listening to it is about to pick up it just it's just it's more power for them to have and i'm trying to figure out who's singing that it sounds like it's mitch it's I can't make it out but regardless it, it sounds like him it might be a combination but regardless i love the tone and how he's singing it right it's sung with such emotion it's like you know it isn't just 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 song directly at the mic it sounds like he's kind of like like wailing almost right especially with the way that it starts how it kind of like does mm -hmm. attention to detail with pentatonics is what keeps me coming back baby
for them. I got to pause right here. I got to because I know they about to hit us with the wall of sound, right? I know the goosebumps are about to start shivering up and down my body and I ain't going to know what's going on. So I had to take a take 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 a step back. And, and one thing that I love about Scott and his ability to sing is his ability to sing with soul, his ability to wail. You know what I mean? To add that emotion. Every one of them have a way of doing that in their way. But for me, when it comes to wailing, you know, as far as like, 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 like my top singer, Scott is definitely one of them. Like, like top, I'm, I'm going to say top five, right? With the ability to wail. Cause there's a lot of people who can sing. There's a lot of people who can kind of just belt out a whole lot of notes. But the way that Scott kind of wails, he wails in control. You know what I mean? Like the like the type of stuff you hear, like boys to men, right? They will in with a purpose. They're going to make you feel every note and every emotion. You don't know whether it be sad or happy or just straight disgusting, disgusted with how good it is. <laughs> So, oh, oh that, was, that was a weird abrupt ending. Um, I knew that wall of sound was coming. I knew it was. Um, I swear to you right now that by the end of this year, I'm going to have my three-year-old son start singing some pentatonics, right? I'm going to see if I can get him to start singing some bass lines. <laughs> he already singing some stuff right now. He, he, he all, he, it's funny thing about it is that he's not even off key. Like he might be a future singer. Some, some of these notes he's hitting without, with zero practice, hitting hearing it for the same time. But it only makes sense, right? I'm a, a former musician. My wife was a former musician. Both of us met together because of music. Music is in our blood. So why wouldn't it be in his? You know what I mean? Um, one more thing before we end on this, I wanted to touch on Matt, right? And the bass notes that he was hitting. Um, I was doing some studies, you know, musical composition and stuff like that. And I landed on a video that was talking about um, how to construct interesting bass lines. And one of the things that I stumbled upon was, of course, you know, just like, you know, like with any melody, you know, you have your motifs and everything. Uh, but one of the things that they stated was not starting the bass note on the root note of the scale that you're singing on. Right. Um, and you got to add like some type of some type of intrigue, like uh, some type of rhythm in there, but don't take too much away from it. Uh, what I was hearing from Matt, it sounded yeah, that that was amazing, you know, because if I'm sitting here thinking about the chords of the song, the chord progression, I don't really know what the chord progression on this is. I'm pretty sure it's a quick search. Um, but if you look at the chord progression and you look at the bass notes of those chords, you will find that Matt wasn't just sticking to the bass notes. He was giving us all kinds of range. And not only that, but he's giving us the rhythm too. that boom, 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 boom. Like, you know what I mean? Like type of stuff you would hear in like an 80s rock band, right? I'm sitting here thinking about Queen, you know, just one of them. Actually, is that 80s or is that 70s? I don't know. I do know it's before my time. <laughs> Sorry to those but who, who I hurt by saying that. But anyways, the bass sound was amazing. Harmonies absolutely killed it. The wall of sound was there as I thought it would be. And it came with spectacular strength. All right. Now, I'm a little bit sad because I feel like I'd feel this song a lot more if we were closer to Christmas. But it is November. Right. For some people, Christmas has already started. <laughs> All right, y'all. That's the end of this video. If you enjoyed the content, leave a like and subscribe. Dave's out.